Dr. Monty Badami, thank you so much for joining us today for another episode of Idioms of Normality brought to you by Future Framed TV. Before I launch into our first question, uh, I'd like you to tell us a bit about yourself. You're an anthropologist, you're the founder of uh, a social enterprise, Habitus. Tell us a bit about the perspectives you bring to the questions we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, so, um, well, first of all, thanks for having me. It's such a pleasure to be hanging out with you and talking like this. Um, what can I say except for the fact that as an anthropologist, I'm fascinated by humans. I'm fascinated by my own humanity and the humanity of others. And, and so that's inextricably linked with these big questions about what is normal. Because, you know, when I think about the story of our species throughout history, it's one of just vast um, differences and variability. As an anthropologist, I, I, I to look at history and ac across space to other cultures to challenge the things that we take for granted to be normal and explore what other possibilities there are out there. Um, and so, you know, uh, I've taken that perspective, that basic foundation into the work that I do uh, with Habitus, which essentially uses anthropology and uh, emotional intelligence and educational psychology um, to rehumanize businesses uh, and schools and communities. Wow, that's that's quite a, a heterodox skill set that you bring to this question. So let me just jump in with it. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, as an anthropologist, I remember when I started anthropology uh, many, many moons ago. They still had universities back then. Uh, uh, but uh, um, I remember starting anthropology and thinking, wow, these guys do everything. Um, and, you know, like a lot of people often ask me, you know, you do lots of different stuff. What's that about? Like it seemed a little bit kind of uh, a little bit schizoid, if you will. Right. And I'm like, well, actually, I'm I've got lots of different parts of myself, you know, and so I'm really interested in exploring different things. Uh, and what holds it together is my humanity within. Right. And I think that's a really um, important feature of anthropology is we're kind of jacks of all trade, but aces of none, um, because that's what humans are. <laughs> so how, how does a jack of all trades ask yeah. the question, what is normal? Yeah, no, you're going to have a tough time, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big question. Um, you know, like when when you sent, uh, you know, the email out to, to flag the questions, like my head went into overdrive. Uh, I think that, as I said to you before, that fundamental question of what is normal is the thing that's driven me to do anthropology. It's kind of the thing that I have uh, at the forefront of my mind when I wake up in the morning and as I go to sleep at night. And, uh, you know, whether it be like I used to play around with this idea of what is normal from that statistical perspective and was unsatisfied with that. Um, and, and the more I inquire and research and study into the human condition, um, the the less um, valuable that that construct of normality is for me and in fact the more limiting it is right because the question what is human is very different to the question what is normal absolutely absolutely we can we can differentiate or we can describe um uh, statistical norms or patterns that emerge in a particular place but does you know to what extent does that actually do justice to the depth and breadth of 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 human subjectivity or human complexity or human variability which which you know when you step out of that that uh a one space and when you take off that one lens which is essentially trying to define that norm or, or uh, reduce that complex experience to be able to fit into particular norms. Um, when you step out of that space, when you take off that lens, the variability and the diversity seems to be the thing that's, uh, that, that cuts through the space and time of, of you know, human existence. So, so is what is normal a useful question? It tends to tell me more about the person asking the question than it does about the phenomena that's being described. <laughs> That's, that's actually a very interesting insight. Are you talking here about people who are driven by a desire to be normal or are you talking about people who question the world around them? Uh, the two aren't mutually exclusive. I mean, I'm, you know, like I, I don't consider myself to be normal and I don't think many of my friends would. But having said that, so I question normality all the time, but I still feel the coercive uh, disciplinary and limiting uh, effects of yeah. of of normality you know it's like when we talk about you know race is not real but racism is normality is not real but the pressures of normality very much are and they create stress that can be incredibly challenging um uh, that that you know can potentially create that resistance against the normality while simultaneously drawing us in to feel as though we uh, need to be normal in order to, to to feel a sense of belonging and purpose and place 
It's interesting. It's almost like you're describing some sort of cognitive dissonance where we know being pulled into this limiting world is is not going to be doing us many favours, but yet we're still drawn and pulled into it. Well, this is the beauty of, of human experience. This is the beauty of, of, of reality is that it is so complex. Uh, I'm not religious, but if I did have a religion, it, it would be uh, based on the, the canonical text of Douglas Adams. <laughs> <laughs> He writes in, uh, in the, uh, uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, a trilogy in five parts. He writes, you know, the universe is so big. It's so hugely bigly big that we can't, we just simply cannot get our heads around it. And he describes this um, this punishment, this uh, intergalactic punishment, which is, you know, one of the greatest, biggest, most uh, heinous punishments uh, in the universe, which is to give you um, uh, a complete perspective of the universe. And, and in that moment, when you are given complete perspective of the vast, bigly bigness of the universe it just you, you implode right <laughs> it's so crazy we can't handle it and so this idea of cognitive dissonance is everywhere we're always you know there is always a complexity and competing forces that we're constantly trying to reconcile uh, in, in many ways you know ritual and culture um uh, practice symbols structures um these sorts of things that infuse our uh, the cultural norms that I think we're touching on. There are mechanisms through which we can provide a sense of stability within a, a, a constantly changing dynamic world uh, in which we live. Yeah, that cognitive dissonance, I think that's, that's the normal condition, if anything, right? The complexity, the messiness um, uh, uh, is, is kind of, if there was normality, that would be it for me. But we try to superimpose structures and symbols and practices in order to make that complexity much more easily understandable and digestible and manageable to give us a sense of control in a, in a, a dynamic and ever-changing world. So are you talking about the process of sense-making in a world that doesn't make sense? Absolutely. So bring your towel. <laughs> bring your towel. Don't yeah. panic. <laughs> <laughs> Monty, Dr. Monty Badami, I feel like we could be going on like this forever, but I'm going to finish <laughs> with, um, with putting you in the, in the questioner's seat and ask you what questions we should be asking about this process of sense-making. What questions should we be asking about what is normal? Oh, I love that question. And this is, this is the essence, I think, of the anthropological lens. Whenever you see um, a status quo or a thing that appears to be normal or that, that let me be clear, is claimed to be normal. Um, I think the questions I always ask is, is what have they put in? What have they left off? Um, uh, who created the framework or the structure? Um, uh, to what end? Who does it serve? Uh, who does it advantage? Who does it disadvantage? How can we take that awareness of, of the way in which this thing, which is assumed to be sort of universal and um, uh, uh, I suppose uh, a prolific and, and everywhere, how can we take the lens that gives us an opportunity to question that? How can we take that, those questions and think, well, how, how can we redistribute this and make it more equitable for others? How can we acknowledge the way in which normal itself can become a, a very limiting factor on people's lives and open that up question what is normal so that we can have a greater potential and capacity to imagine what could be not limited by what should be some fantastic questions there and i'm going to have to go over this footage myself and jot them all down because you know who is advantage who is disadvantage who who determines what normal is uh, you know, who determines these cultural norms. There's so many fantastic questions in there. And thank you so much for your time today. Uh, we, you know, I, I'm sure the listeners are going to be uh, invaluably enlightened with new questions to ask and perhaps lured by this discipline of <laughs> yeah. jack of all trades. <laughs> I love how we call it a discipline. Look, my friend, if I could just uh, finish on one thing, it would be, uh, it, it, I suppose this is the crux of, of those questions, is um, when we have this definition of what it means to be normal, it's usually based on the valorization or the volume of particular voices. 
Mm. So what I always ask is, what are the voices that are not being heard? How can we draw those voices in to hear the the various, the different stories, the different perspectives uh, on this phenomenon and actually open it up so that it is much more inclusive um, uh, uh, and, and I think much more representative of a very diverse species, uh, uh, the human species. Beautiful way to end the, the talk. Thank you very much, Dr. Vadami. Pleasure, my friend. <laughs> <laughs>